Over the last year and a half, Brandon has caused propane prices to skyrocket, just like every other fuel price. And we use propane to heat our water up to this point, but I decided it was time to change to a uh, one of these new heat pump type electric water heaters. They were supposed to offer big savings over any other fuel cell. Uh, I found this Rheem Proterra and I got it at Home Depot. And I, picked, I ordered it online and picked it up in the store. And you can see it's a very tall unit. Now these heat pumps actually have a uh, compressor on top of them. Kind of like refrigeration compressors. So they have to be kept stood up while you're transporting them. So you can see it really does stand up you know, pretty high in the truck there. And I had to use my little tractor with a loader to, to get it down. Uh, the weight of this water heater I think is right around 250 pounds. So... It's a 50 gallon and um, it's replacing a 40 gallon actually. We had a 40 gallon propane, but these have a, uh, a lower output, uh, overall output gallons of hot water per hour than propane. So I went up to the next side bigger, which this is supposed to be good for a family of four, four to five. It's only two of us, so it should be no problem. And actually, um, I, at the end, I'll show you. It really was no problem. It works fine. But first thing I had to do was get it, pick it up at Home Depot, and then uh, get it home and off the truck here. And, and as you can see, these little clamp-on pallet forks, I've been using these for years now, and they really do a good job. So I got it all loaded up, but I can take it right around back now with the... Um, forks and put it right in our cellar door so that'll make it really easy to get it in there because it actually you know it is quite a heavy unit it's a lot heavier than a standard water heater and it's top heavy to top everything off let's go bring this around back and uh, set it in there next to the old propane so you can see it's a much larger unit than the old propane one was uh, so it's about six inches taller. It's a lot bigger around. Um, that one's a six-year warranty heater that's 18 years old, and it's really starting to make some funny noises, so it was time to replace it anyway. Now, this one's got an energy guide of $104, which I'll show you in the end exactly what it's going to be. I wound up going back to Home Depot and buying fittings, and to put this in, I decided to try Shark Bite fittings. Uh, my first time trying them, and uh, there's a dielectric elbow, dielectric fittings for attaching copper to the water heater and the valve. And all my other plumbing in the house is copper, so I decided to stick with copper. And I didn't want to try to PEX or anything else. Um, you know, I wanted to keep it all the same. Some clamps here and uh, plenty of pipe insulation. And for that uh, shark bite stuff, you need a gauge and it's supposed to deeper but it really doesn't and then I had some old fittings and you know I picked up some more three-quarter inch pipe insulation so I could insulate everything really good and some old fittings I you know I had out in the garage and this copper the cost of copper pipe right now made me cry so I'm not going to tell you how much it was but it's really up there so I started putting together the you know the pieces to tie into the old lines and there you can see the first dielectric elbow set up and with copper when you're working with that it's really pretty easy to swap copper together and, you know do a good job and not have any leaks or problems biggest thing is keeping everything clean you know you properly clean it all um, no dust or contamination in anything and you'll you know every joint will sweat perfect and your little brushes, you know, that make it easier these days. You used to have to use sandpaper. And then you want to use a good coat of soldering paste on all the mating surfaces. And I like to put it on both both sides. I've actually got a brush for this can of paste, but it's just too hard to, to get it on the brush. It's like Vaseline thickness. So, um, And one thing I noticed on this new pipe, it was kind of, it wasn't quite perfectly round. It's kind of like a little bit oval type shape so it was tough to get some of the fittings together but again you want to make sure that you get plenty of the the correct soldering paste um, you know on on each of the joints on both sides before you put it together and then you can wipe off the excess once you get it together and there again you can see it's a 
this new this new tubing I mean for what you pay for it it's just, just not perfectly round anymore then the dielectric elbow uh, or fitting there and I'm you can see I'm just putting the uh, metal piece on because I'm doing a very short stub here and I'll put the plastic in back in later I have to cut it putting in uh, you know everything gets all glued up and then put together and uh, let's try to get that on there too another one that's tight that's not the hammer you should be using but I was lazy and then you know soldering is really easy you just want to make sure that you get the fitting hot hot enough to pull the solder into the joint um, you don't want to really just solder around the outside you want it to actually pull it in and I use a map gas torch that really does keep things up quicker now in the old, in the old days they used to use 50-50 solder and that stuff would melt at a much lower temperature um, this newer lead free solder does take some higher temps and there'll come a point when all of a sudden you see it just sucking itself right into the joint and you know it's you know, hot enough then and just put a little, I put a little extra around let it trip off but you know it's pretty much you see it pulling right up into the joint so you know you've got a good joint yeah this is all kind of old school now though nobody solders stuff anymore it seems like but the rest of my house is all copper and I wanted to stick with copper I didn't want any of that plastic you know packs or anything in it right now so I figured I'd you know do it this way and that way it would be um, you know batching and here's that ring that goes in the dielectric coupling there and the trick I learned from a plumber is to um, when you got a real short stub like that don't try to solder it with the ring in place because it will melt it and it won't be any good so I just put a slit in there and drop it over lock it and it, it the nut will hold it in place and then there's a rubber washer that goes in the joint now that shark bite pull that you get it's supposed to chamfer it but it really doesn't do a good job but it is good for marking the depth you need this to mark the depth see that mark that i put on the pipe there i'm going to put the valve on there and i have to make sure that it is actually um push down to that line and I'm gonna kind of weak lately I lost like half my muscle so it's really a job to get these things on but um, you know they're really, they really shouldn't be that bad to put on and there you can see you just push it down and seat it and once it's on the mark you know it's right now for the main pipes I'm moving the water heater a little bit and for the main pipes I have to cut into here I there's no way I could spread them apart to put a T in there inside and sweat it in place so I decided to go with those shark bite T's that I showed you and they're a slip slip fit T I guess that slips over and goes back so first thing you do is take a tubing cutter here and cut a two inch section of tubing out per the instructions for the shark bite you want to make sure it's exactly two inches, not a sixteenth more or sixteenth less, I found out. So, you know, make sure you got a bucket there, too, because I did drain the pipes down, but I still, you know, I'm getting some drips there, you can see. The whole house, I guess, the faucets and stuff start draining back. And then I couldn't really get much in here to, to, chan to break the edge there and make sure it's a little chamfer so i just took a little file just went around the edges try to put a little tiny 45 on there and i had some fine plumber's roll that i took a piece of that i'm just gonna get the corrosion and stuff off the pipe where that fitting's going you can see it had a lot of like you know i guess it's like 30 years old so here's some corrosion so i want to get them all cleaned up that one's pretty good let's get a little bit more off there the shark bite fitting you're supposed to just slip in place let me wipe off anything there and this little plastic gauge here again you have to mark the uh, depth of insertion for this T 
and then I also double mark the overall width of the T right there just to make sure everything was perfect when it was done because if it's off center you're going to have problems later. So once everything's marked, it's supposed to be a simple job to just slip it on one and it, it goes almost two inches or an inch past where it should go. And then you just supposed to be able to put this little plastic cap on there and squeeze the collar in and just slide it back and uh, have it slide onto the other pipe. Well, you can see uh, and I have a muscle left there and it's kind of, it's hard for me, but I'd be probably, you know, anybody else could do it, I guess. It's, it's really, um, takes a lot of pressure to try to hold, squeeze that orange thing up against the, the fitting area there to compress the, uh, that little ring that releases the lock. And then try to get the other piece aligned at the same time. fight with it enough and eventually it will go it's just you know it's just a matter of trying to, to keep that one orange thing compressed on there so that you know that's about the worst thing with these fittings and here's that pipe I made up to feed the hot water to the from the new water heater out into the hot water line and you know that went in pretty easy just a matter of marking it and uh, just fighting it until it gets into the point where it should be um, and like I said, it's the first time I tried these shark bites, and you know, in the end, they, they work pretty good. You know, a little tough to get in, but no leaks, no problem. So I'm happy with that. And the same thing with the other pipe. This is the cold water feed line to the water heater. So I'm going to go back through and cut the two inches out and um, put this other T on there. And that first part's the easy part, getting it to slide on and pass, but, you know, getting it to slide back with that little orange cap. They do make a tool that you can buy, I think, to help squeeze them. And if you're going to do more than one or two of these, uh, or you're going to be removing any of these, I'd probably recommend a better tool. This little orange thing just has no way to, got no way to grip on anything to squeeze it. So it takes a lot of, a lot of strength in your fingers, I guess, to work it. But eventually I got that in place, and here's the other line. This one's got to go up over that, and this is the one I pre-made for the uh, feed to the water line to the bottom. So there they are. Everything's, uh, you know, installed, ready to, to turn it on and check for leaks. And I had none, so that was a good thing. Still got to go back and strap everything up and stuff and finish up the condensate drain. And there's where those dielectric unions go to so you don't get corrosion in that fitting there. And here's the old gas one. I did um, disconnect that. I cut the lines and just stuck two of those shark bite valves on there so we can install another propane one in if um, we ever get an administration gets the price of propane back down. But for now, I'm going to have to be uh, electric. Now, I fired it up. Um, I decided to take an a, a decibel reading and this is what it is it's about 57 58 decibels at two feet away so I see a lot of people complaining that they're loud but really isn't that loud it's no louder than a dehumidifier and here we are with all the um, everything's all insulated pipes are all clamped um, and this is the one thing about the shark bites I don't like is you have to buy these ground clamps to go back and ground the lines they do not carry electric um, and with copper pipes everything has to be bonded together so that was a big expense I didn't expect but um, otherwise the shark bites work great there's a control panel and I do have it set at 120 right now and that seems to be working out perfect for us a little bit cooler than the gas water heater was but um, this one actually we've had no problems with it and there's those valves and everything so you, know, you can see it was a pretty simple install plus I do have um, the ability to throw the propane one back in if there you know should there ever be major grid problems or anything 
And I downloaded that Echo app, Echo Net app to my phone, and I'll show you that in a second. And I did put a drain pan down there, but really don't need it in my basement. So that's what it looks like, you know, everything installed. Um, Ream, you know, I did recommend using some flexible tubing and stuff, but I didn't like that. So these are the costs of the old water heater. Um, our cost, actual cost. So it was about nine twenty three fifteen a year. So seventeen seventy five a week in the end, it actually cost us. And this new heat pump, the first week we used nine point forty nine kilowatt hours. And that was a dollar fifty two's worth of electric. So it looks like uh, we're going to save about sixteen bucks a week if uh, this continues on, and it should pay for itself after two years. So we will see. So I'm just going to show you some screenshots of the app, and that was today. Um, one, you know, I got a even week that we've been using it. In the first screen you go into, you set it tells you what it's set to. Then you go to the second one and you can adjust the temperature there. Actually, it says 20. That should say 120. They do have a bug in it. And it will tell you if the um, the heat pump is running, the compressor. And then you go to the next page. And this is the energy usage per day. That, that was today's usage so far. And um, then you can go back and get the total energy usage. for This is for the one-week period, exactly from the time we fired it up. So you can see we use 9.49 kilowatt hours for a week. So that's what I'm basing this whole video on. And we'll see in the future, you know, if that changes or, you know, what happens. But I think it's a pretty good starting point. Now, I'm not sure what the overall savings will be, but it looks like it's going to be a really big saving. So I'm happy about that. And Ream does have a lot of information about this on your website. If you, you know, if you're interested and want to look into them a little bit more. But, you know, I, I just decided to try it because I just couldn't afford to propane anymore. So I'll keep you updated and, you know, do some updates in the future just to let you know how it's going. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.